This is Sarah Mikesell with the Pig Site, and today we are online with Dr. Chantal Farmer. She is a research scientist with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, based at the Sherbrooke, Sherbrooke R&D Center in Quebec, Canada. Dr. Farmer's research is focused on sow lactation biology. Thanks for being with us today, Chantal. Thank you, Sarah. It's a real pleasure to have this opportunity. Thanks, Chantal. Let's dive right into uh, our conversation today. Um, and it's based around the idea that litter size continues to increase, but we know that sow milk production has increased, but not at the same rate, right? Um, and today we want to talk a little bit about replacement sows and how we can manage sows to enhance mammary development. So let's start with kind of the stages of mammary development, if you could kind of explain that to us. <laughs> Hey, let me first start by saying that the more mammary cells that synthesize milk that are present at the beginning of lactation, the greater amount of milk can be produced by the sow. So just to tell you why is mammary development important? Well, it's related to optimal milk yield of the sow. And we cannot increase something that is not happening. If, I, if there is zero mammary development, I cannot do anything to stimulate it. Right. That's why the stages of memory development are important. So that's why that question is important. So in pigs, there are three stages of rapid memory development. Those are the only three stages where we can go and try to stimulate memory development. Okay. So the first stage is before puberty, from 90 days of age to puberty. The second stage is in the last third of gestation. So day 90 of gestation up to farrowing, day 104 approximately. And the third stage is throughout lactation when the mammary gland is being suckled by the piglets. And again, as a scientist and I presume as a nutritionist or a producer, you want to have already the maximal number of cells at the beginning of lactation. So I'm most interested in what happens before lactation in terms of mammary development to make sure that it's already optimal when the sow is actually farrowing. Very good. And what factors can really influence this mammary development? Well, in fact, there's quite a few factors. Things like uh, hormonal status. Obviously, there are key hormones, prolactin, estrogens, uh, insulin-like growth factor one, so growth factors. So hormonal status is important. Nutrition of the animal is important, and I'll mention this you know, maybe later on in more detail. Uh, body condition of the animal at the end of gestation is also important, and uh, management of the animal, uh, the effect of a teat being used or not used in first parity on the amount of milk that that teat will produce in second parity. So those are all four factors that are all important in terms of mammary development. Very good. And can you share some of the research, some of your research findings in this area? Yeah, so if I go again with these factors one by one, Great. Uh, succinctly, <laughs> hormonal status, prolactin. If you get rid of prolactin in the period of memory development at the end of gestation, there will not be uh, basically any memory development. So major inhibition of memory development. So right. prolactin is essential. And if you give prolactin on top of what they're normally, the, you know, is normally present in the circulation, it will stimulate memory development. So it's a key hormone. Uh, also, uh, estrogens are important, and really a lot in the prepubertal animal, where I found that if you give extra estrogens in the feed through phytoestrogens, it will stimulate mammary development. IGF-1 is a growth factor that can be increased in nutrition, but in my studies, I've increased it with injections of somatotropin, which is not what will be done eventually, but just to see its effect. And yes, if you increase that growth factor, it will stimulate memory development at the end of gestation. Nutrition, if you do a feed restriction in the prepubertal animal between days 90 to puberty, it will inhibit memory development. In those studies, we did 20% feed restriction, but if you do a lesser feed restriction, then it's okay. But you don't wanna do a major feed restriction because that will inhibit memory development at puberty. Again, with nutrition, if you give too much energy in gestation and the animal gets to be obese, it's bad in terms of memory development. And in fact, in terms of body condition, I found that there's an optimum level 
of back fat that you need on the animal, which is between 17 and 25 millimeters of back fat. So the animal cannot be thinner than 17 or obese, you know, 26 or more, because that will have a negative effect on memory development. And the last thing in nutrition is actually a scoop I'm giving you here because it's not published yet. In a recent study, I've increased the amount of lysine in the diet at the end of gestation, and I, it led to a great increase in the amount of milk synthesizing cells in the mammary gland. So, wow. So nutrition yeah. does have an important role. And the last role I was talking about is uh, management. It, it's very interesting that if you have a teat that is not suckled at all in the first lactation, mm -hmm. And you look at the piglet that will suckle that teat in the next lactation, it will weigh 1.12 kilogram less on the 56 of age. So yes, the teat needs to be used in first parity to produce enough milk in the second parity. Oh, great. However, now, you know, I presented this to producers and they thought, oh, it's interesting, but how long does a teat need to be used in first parity? And the answer is two days. So if you have a primiparous animal that's very thin and has a very large litter size and you say, oh, I want to get rid of some piglets to give her a chance to, you know, to have a good body condition and be in the herd longer, you can do so, but do it on day three of lactation if farrowing is on day one. So Got you it. have a 48-hour period where feet needs to be suckled to produce enough milk in the next lactation. So in a nutshell, I would say those are the key factors. <laughs> I found it in my studies. I know there's a lot to take in there. I, um, I guess based on your research, what's the best way uh, to stimulate cell mammary gland development? You found a lot of different ways, but what's like what's what's the most practical or the best way, I guess, to do it? Okay, well, when I mentioned uh, no feed restriction before puberty, basically not many producers will use feed restriction. So that's not a major point. So, and some feed restriction now, 10% could be used. So that's not a major point. It's more corroborating to producers. Yes, feed them, you know, as much as you can. I think the major point is uh, body condition. You have okay. to make sure that you look and even ideally measure back fat thickness of these animals. Because if you are below 17 millimeters, there's a drastic decrease in terms of mammary development. So Interesting. obviously okay. back fat at the end of gestation is affected by how much you feed. But I found that back fat at mating is not as important than mm. back fat at the end of gestation. So you can correct for back fat. If the animal is kind of thin at mating, just feed her more in gestation. And you can correct to make sure that she gets up to at least 17 millimeters of back fat. So I would say that's the first thing to do that's kind of right. easy, that one can you know, easily manage and uh, would be very important for milk production. And I mean, obviously, uh, in future years, when I finalize my studies on lysine and IGF-1 and so on, then there will be more practical ways to, to also stimulate mammary development. So have me at your talk, you know, uh, <laughs> interview in a, a year and a half or so, then I'll have more information. <laughs> Well, I, I expect that I expect you to continue to have lots of information for us because I know you've got lots of research underway, Chantal. So um, one last question that we had for you is kind of how feed can be a tool, right? And we've talked about this a little bit um, over the 114 days of gestation um, to help sows produce milk. How do you use feed? And, and you've talked a little bit about that, but, but can you expand on that a little bit more? Yeah, well, I guess I will repeat a lot of the things I've said, but it's always good. So over the whole gestation, amount of feed is important to make sure that you have between 17 and 25 millimeters of back fat at the end of right. gestation. So amount of feed is important. At the end of gestation, from days 90 to 114, where you do have a lot of mammary development, right. you want to make sure that you don't give too much energy, but too much energy is, is really a lot. So right. most people will not give too much energy. But right now, what I would say is, you know, keep appraised of what I'll be doing because what will come is that we need to increase lysine. So eventually we will go to phase feeding where at 90 days of age, the animals should right. receive more lysine than before 90 days of age. And okay. that's really going to be a, a very useful tool. 
And then eventually uh, there will be studies to look at different feed types that can stimulate concentrations of the growth factor IGF-1. So that's something else as of day 90 that could be included in the feeding program to increase the concentration of the IGF-1. Very good. It sounds like feeding is it's really a balance, right? Uh, it's not too much energy, but not too little energy is really critical, right? Definitely, definitely. And it very much relates to body condition. So the negative energy uh, effect of too much energy is right. because the animal is obese. Yeah. So for a producer, it's something that's kind of easy to follow up on is the body condition of your animal. So if body condition is okay, that means you're not giving too much energy. You're fine. Thanks so much for all the information today, Chantal. It was a pleasure to be here and have this opportunity to discuss this with you. I mean, it's nice to do research, but having the information that you gather, you know, in your lab and being, you know, transferred to the producers who will use it, that's most gratifying. So thanks for the opportunity. We appreciate all the all the all the information, especially this new tidbit on lysine. So we'll we'll keep an eye out for that as well. Excellent. This is, yeah, great. This is Sarah Mike so with the pig site.